Congratulations, graduates. You made it. The end is finally here, the end of the beginning, the beginning of the end. I don't know what that means, but it came out of my mouth. Awesome time. I have a great pleasure of speaking to you this morning. Pastors asked me to come and, and speak to the graduates and everybody else who's here. And um, I think it's awesome to have an opportunity to honor students, especially when they hit a milestone like this, something so wonderful as um, ending high school and now, you know, launching out into young adulthood and making some major awesome decisions that are going to hopefully be led by the, by the voice of God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, as I was praying this week, um, I, you know, I was listening to God, and he was, he was giving me some direction. And even this morning in prayer, um, God was throwing stuff at me to say, and I'm like, man, God, what would you have me say to these, these young people who are making such huge decisions right now, who are get ready to spread their wings and um, you know, make these big decisions and find some freedoms they've never had, and hopefully, by the grace of God, get closer to God through the entire process, because that's so important. And um, some, one of the things I heard in prayer this morning was, don't chase after shiny objects. You know, like a fish chasing a lure or a raccoon going after, you know, a little piece of tinfoil or something. And there's so many shiny objects in life. There's so many things that are attractive to us. And some of them are really good things, you know, jobs and um, paychecks and girls looking for that ring, you know, all that stuff that's shiny. But we're not supposed to chase after the shiny objects. We're supposed to sh chase after the light, the light of Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to focus in on because we have to go the way of God. Sharon Jennings in our Tuesday morning staff meeting said that phrase. It was so powerful. Go the way of God. Your mission is this way. Go this way. So as I encourage you, Graduates this morning, don't go after the shiny objects. Go after what God has for you. Yes. Seek after Jesus Christ and put him first in your life. Amen? Yes. Amen. Graduation, um, for me, was such a load off because school was just not my thing. I'll be honest with you. I was homeschooled, and I didn't like it. Didn't. So... Praise God, it was over, and I, I remember going, I don't know what's next, but whatever it is, it's going to be better than whatever we've been for the last four years. And um, I love my parents so much, but I'm, I'm so much better friends with them now that I'm not with them 24 hours a day, doing school, living there. Yeah, Awesome. And some of you probably love school. It was, it was your thing. It was easy for you. You probably had your social time and your growing time. Maybe you even got some college under your belt already, and that's great. Good for you. And God bless you for it. And some of you probably, you know, school was a trial. It was something hard. You had to work hard at it, and you, you accomplished it. Congratulations. You made it. And um, today is for you. Absolutely. I had some points I wanted to just share with you, some things that I felt like, man, if I had known this at your age, I probably wouldn't have wasted a couple of years of my life. You know, I would have gone some places and made some better decisions. And... Um, been closer to God through the process, because that's what we want, right? We have to be close to God. We have to hear God. It is essential for us to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right. So my first point was to stay connected to Jesus. Maybe you've never connected with Jesus, and basically what you have to do is just believe in Him and accept Him to be your personal Lord and Savior. And the Bible tells us that out of your heart will, will pour this river of living water that is Jesus Christ. You need that because it's going to help you live, it's going to help you grow, and it's going to help you touch people around you. You need that river of living water coming out of you. And, you know, a relationship with Jesus is just the most important thing there is. It's eternity. So stay connected to Jesus through the, this whole process. Don't forget about it. Don't forget about him. He's your number one priority in life. Even before a spouse and a job and a ministry, Jesus Christ is number one. And he wants to be too. And you should want him to be. My second thing to stay connected to this morning is the man of God, your pastor, or our pastors. And uh, maybe this isn't your home church, so, you know, you're a pastor. But our, for here, Pastor Rick and Diane, and... Um, 
it is just the most powerful thing to be connected to the man of God. It isn't just about coming and hearing a word preached, but that's awesome because that's going to help your spirit grow hearing the word preached. It's not just about having some spiritual leadership, someone who can help guide you, but it's what Jesus intended. He gave us gifts. Our pastor is a gift to us. Amen. Yeah, you can give him. Let's get back. So when you, when you accept this, these, this couple as their pastors, you're receiving the gift God gave you. If you're coming here and you're not accepting the gift God gave you, what, is, what does that say about you? I don't know. What does it say? But <laughs> I won't go there. I'll, you figure that out. <laughs> All right. But our pastor is such an awesome thing, that gift of a shepherd, that gift of someone who hears from God for you. I don't know how many times I've been in the, the valley of decision, as pastor says it, and I didn't know what to do. And I could have just made my own decision based on my own understanding, my own abilities. But if, if I went and sat in church, and here it is Sunday morning, and pastor comes and he's got a word from heaven for me. <laughs> there it is. Awesome. So how can, we, how can we not accept our pastor? You know, so many times as young people, you're, you come as, with your parents, and you come with a relative, or you just, you know, come every once by yourself, but you never accepted the man of God that Jesus gave you. And as a young person, you need to do this. This is something you need to connect to. You can have a relationship with, with this couple, and obviously other leaders in the church. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But God gave them for you. And if you're going to go away to school, you can still stay connected to the man of God in your life. If you're going to go away to a job, you can still stay connected to the man of God in your life. And it's, it's going to continue to be a, a stream of life into your, into your spirit, into your life, and help give you direction. When you're making decisions, you can run them by them. Don't just, don't just pull the, the plug and, you know, the switch. Because and, and, um, he's not going to judge you. He's going to love you unconditionally, and he's going to tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. The next thing to stay connected to is the house of God, the church. Man, what an awesome place this church is, and, you know, other churches. So maybe this isn't your church, but stay connected to the house of God. The house of God has molded my life. It has formed my life. I have been trained in the house of God. I, I've had multiple careers come out of training I learned in the house of God and direction I had and the godly leaders that are in the house of God and in church. Man. Not to mention, it's a place to come and serve. You know, we're all called to this thing called the ministry of helps. You know, a lot of churches call it volunteering. And we, we come here and God has called every single one of us to do something called helps. And it doesn't have to be a huge responsibility. It can be a, a small thing, but you're going to find fulfillment. God's going to grow you up in the process, and you're going to help make a great church even greater. This is an awesome church, and we have an awesome helps team, but I'll tell you what, if every young person in here and every adult in here got involved, this would be a much greater church. And the talents and gifts that God has given you are needed in the body of Christ. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. So stay connected to church. And um, even if you if, go away to school, graduates, or you go away to a job, you can still stay connected to your church. And you can still financially support your church, and you can obey God. And there comes a time where God calls you to another church, or you know that you're just not going to be here and you need to find another one, then call your pastor and say, will you release me? And let them, let them bless you and send you out. Don't just take off. You know, I, was say, I said earlier, um, before you go anywhere, have a church picked out. Before you sign that application to that job, before you pick that school, make sure there's a, there's a church and a pastor in that town that you're going to get fed at. That's, that's more important than your education. It is. It's more, and more important. And uh, if you go and you just church hop, you could end up falling away. I've watched that happen so many times. Church hopping is not the answer. Now, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find the right home. I, I get that. But 
ultimately, you know, I believe God can lead you to a church and you can pray it in and be led by God right into you, a place where you're going to be fed the uncompromised Word of God. Amen? Amen. Next thing to stay connected to is godly people. And I'm not talking just about Christians, because there's a lot of Christians out there who don't act very godly and don't live very godly. I, I grew out of high school, I hung out with a lot of Christians, and they ended up not being a very good witness on me, uh, very good influence on me. And I ended up going and becoming just like them, because they were my influence, and I wanted to hang out with them. And so as this process of graduation happens, and you're away, and you're at school, or you're at a job, or maybe you haven't got connected to the church, you need to get connected to godly people wherever you're at, because they're going to sharpen you and build you up, and they're going to lead you closer to God instead of farther away. Don't get isolated. If you get isolated, the devil will use that, and ultimately you're you'll end up farther from God. And we want to get closer to God. Amen? We want to go the way of God and go after the light and not shiny objects or dark objects, for that matter. Let God open doors for you. This one's hard. (laughs) Because there's so many opportunities in life. There's so many things in life that open up and they're shiny and, and exciting. But they're not all God's doors. If God's not behind that door, if he didn't open it for you, you shouldn't walk through it. And you can ask him, God, is this a door you open for me? You can ask him for peace about it. And if you're having fear and anxiety about something, which could happen if it's a God door, you just take authority over that in the name of Jesus, and then you ask him for peace. God, is this what you gave me? Holy Spirit, is this, is this something you open for me? But it's so important for us to know exactly what God has for us and the doors that he opened. Because we don't want to do it our own way. We want to do it God's way. We don't want to go God's way. If you follow one of these other paths, one of these other streams, you can end up a long way from where God wanted you to be. And yes, he can restore you, but how much time and energy and resources did you waste in the process? How many people did you lead away from God because of your witness? And as young people, right now, it's it's so crucial to do things right. It's so crucial to make the wise decision and to hear from God for you, for you right now. And you can, you can ask some spiritual leaders around you to, to teach you I mean, and help you find direction, but it, ultimately it's up to you to get on your knees and listen to the Holy Spirit. Get in that place where you can be quiet and lay your burdens down at Jesus' feet. Get the distractions out of the way and listen. Pray and listen. Holy Spirit, reveal to me your plan. And if it's just a little piece, that's okay. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. You know, young people, if you give them the whole picture and one one hit, they probably will pop. They'll blow up. It's just too much. But if if you get one puzzle piece and just run with it, one piece of that vision that God has for you, that plan, he has that perfect plan that's bigger than you can imagine. Because God things are bigger than us, and we can't do them with our own power. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Put God first in everything you do. Because we, we want to be successful, but we want to be successful in God's eyes, not in the world's eyes. The world sees success in shiny objects and in social status and educational academia. And God sees success in relationship and gifts and your heart. So your mission's this way. <laughs> Go forward in God. Don't chase shiny objects. Another thing about um, staying close to godly leaders, I, I have so many awesome godly leaders in my life, and it's taken me submitting myself to them and saying, teach me, show me, and I spending time with them, having fathers and mothers in the faith having great mentors in the faith and people who will come alongside you and tell you the truth. You need people to tell you the truth. 
So today, today that's what I, I brought today is um, to get connected to Jesus, number one. Get connected to the man of God, the woman of God in your life. Stay connected to the church. Get involved. Grow in God right here. There's lots of places to get involved, but there is none that God has called you to more than the local church. And stay connected to godly people. Don't, don't allow yourself to get um, isolated. Don't allow yourself to be influenced by the ungodly. And let Jesus open doors for you. Let God open doors for you. Ask him to. Seek him before you seek other things. Amen. So graduates, you did it. You made it. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, let's, let's give him another hand clap. Yeah. And I pray something that I said this morning registers with you and on some level, you know, that you're able to go forward and be closer to God and make decisions that please Him. Because we don't want to chase after the world or shiny objects. We want to chase after the light. Amen. Amen. Emily, if you'd come on up. We're going to invite our graduates up. And uh, we had uh, five in the first service, and I think we have three right now. So let's invite them up. Um, Elise Bennett, come on up. You can come up here. That's cool, yeah. <laughs> She's really tall. Maja Dickman. Come on up. She's got a designer arm holder. <laughs> and Katie Ward. If you're here. I didn't, I didn't do this in the first service, but um, if, if you're here and you graduated this year and we didn't call your name, you, you can come up here too. And we, don't, we just want to um, say some things to you and lay hands on you today if you're here. So, anybody? Okay. I just thought I'd do that. Actually, let's have you guys come down here now that you've been seen and clapped for. Praise God. Yeah. And then look at me and Emily for a minute. It's all girls. Yeah. Congratulations. You made it. Awesome. I wish I knew you guys better. But um, what I wanted to say is, um, I'm, I'm a youth pastor here, and um, I haven't had a lot of you know time with you guys. But um, this this man over here and this woman, these are now your pastors. If they weren't before, they are. <laughs> All right, and I pray that um, you'll you'll look to them for authority and leadership, and submit to them spiritually and biblically, and um, feed off of this this stream. It's an awesome thing. All right. We're going to invite our pastors to come up, and they're going to lay hands on you guys, and we're going to give you a gift. So um, praise God. Good, and then Steve and Emily are going to stand right behind you. We're just so happy that you're here and that you made it, and now you're getting ready to go on to your next next phase of life. and. And I was one of those. I was one of those guys that was like super happy when high school was over, you know. And I know, of course, that was back in the olden days, you know. But, you know at least a couple years ago, I graduated, but but uh, I do remember, you know, it was some tough times. And but now you're going on to a new new phase of life, maybe college, maybe work, whatever it is. But I'd like to ask, you know, uh, what's your plans? What do you what do you intend to do? Sorry, the, the, the microphone doesn't bite, and I won't pop you over the head, I promise. I'm just going to hold it. Well, what's your plans? I mean, what are you going to... I want to be an RN and then join Peace Corps. Awesome. An RN, join the Peace Corps. Excellent. Very good. So you got plans to go to school and everything, right? Good. How about you? Um, I'm undecided on what I want to do, but I'm going to college at Northwestern, out by Traverse City. Northwestern, out by Traverse. Y'all hear her? Is this microphone? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. And then you had just had a, an auto accident, and 
and got your designer arm saved. Yeah. <laughs> but we're glad that uh, you're you're well, and that uh, that's the only thing that happened. Because you know, in those accidents, a lot of worse things can happen, right? Good. And how about you? What's your plan? Um, I'm going to Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia. Art and science. Art and design. Art and design. I was thinking yeah. art and science. Now there's a there's a weird combination. <laughs> Art and design, what do you intend to do with it? Um, I'm looking at like graphic design and industrial design. Awesome, awesome. And we're sure you're going to listen to Pastor Steve and actually come back and serve here in graphic design, right? And then mom and dad said, yeah! <laughs> awesome, let me give this to you. Uh, I want to just pray with you. I have a gift that we want to give you. And so, Steve, if you'll help me out. And so... Uh, Carrie, I thought it was Katie. Is that an R or is that a T? That's a T. That's a T. Miss Ward. Well, I thought it was Katie, but I can't, my glasses were going. You know, when you got these trifocals, you got to get. Oh yes, Katie. There it is. This is a big Bible, I know, but uh, we're praying and believing that maybe this will be a Bible that you use for the rest of your lifetime. You'll always have it. Uh, I remember my very first Bible, and I still have it. I get it out every, every once in a while, and I pray that this just becomes a, a, a guidepost for you and that you always will use it in your life. And I wrote a little something in it, but I want to pray for you now, okay? Is that all right? <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Katie. Bless her as she goes forward in life. Direct her steps, Lord. Keep her from all of the distractions as Steve said, the shiny objects. And may the number one pursuit in all of her life be chasing after you and finding you, Lord God, in the center of all that she does. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Just don't, don't, don't go anywhere, Stacy. Where's the other Bible? Got another Bible for me? And here's another one, and this is for uh, Maria. Maisa. Maisa. I can't read. Miss <laughs> Dickman. Masia. I'm glad that I heard it pronounced. I kept calling you Messiah. <laughs> that really went over the edge too, didn't it? Yeah. Messiah. Masia, proud of you and uh, just want you to have this again. Uh, you need a third arm to hold that great big thing. You're probably thinking, give us this great big Bible. What do you want us to chase people around and hit them in the head with it? You could probably get somebody saved with that or at least send them to heaven, one of the two. All right. But I pray that this is a Bible that you'll use to, to find direction in your life. And I pray that every time that you open it up, man, new things will come from that. All right? Let me pray with you. Father, thank you so much, Lord. I just call her blessed, blessed, blessed. May her footsteps go into your footprints. And may she always see the direction coming from you. And may you always remain, Lord, the number one focus of her life. Don't let her go to the left or to the right, but keep her focused at all times. I call her blessed, 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 and blessed again. In Jesus' name, speak healing over her arm and any other areas of her body, Lord God, that may be uh, sore from that accident. We just call her healed and blessed and whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Amen. Last Bible here. George. No, it's not George. It's Elise. Uh, I call you blessed. You know, I didn't get to be here during your growing years and everything. I mean, I, I imagine, how old are you, sweetheart? I'm 18. 18. So you were just a, just a baby when Diane and I were here before. Uh, but uh, you've grown up to a beautiful woman, and we're just proud to see what's happening in your life. And I pray that this Bible also will be a, a guidepost for you and that every day you'll remember this not just as a graduation honoring thing, but I pray that it'll be a memorable benchmark in your life, okay? I want to pray for you and just speak God's anointing and blessing in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, may she never steer to the left or right, but follow your path, Lord God, all the days of her life. Lord, you've told us in Revelation 3, 8, Behold, I've opened a door for you that no man can shut. And Lord, I pray that she'll be able to know the door that you have opened and follow after that. May she always keep you the number one pursuit in all of her life, the number one priority, and may she always chase after you. In Jesus' holy name, 
Amen. You ladies, turn around and face the audience. Come on, let's give them a big hand. Come on, let's stand and praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. Congratulations, ladies. You did it. Thank you. You may be seated. Sorry I got the names messed up. Hallelujah. What a, what a great day in church today, huh? Isn't it cool that we can uh, come to church and, you know, it doesn't always have to be the same A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know what I mean? That anything can happen in the house of God. I, I believe coming to church ought to be one of the funnest places to be able to come. You know, uh, coming to church shouldn't be a drudgery that you wake up Sunday morning and go, oh, well, here we go again. Let's, man, it should be exciting. It should be like going to the water park. No, I'm not putting in a water slide. But it's like, I'm, I'm serious. You should leave here today and wake up tomorrow going, man, I can't wait for Sunday. We're going to church. The new baby. The new baby. Where's the other new baby? Oh, praise God. Tell me the little baby's name. Bentley? Bentley. Thank you, Jesus. Bless, bless, blessings in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Father. May Bentley sleep all night, every night in Jesus' holy name. And may Daddy get up when Bentley cries. And what do we have here? Sophia. Sophia. Hey, Sophia. My she word. If she doesn't sleep all night, well, I'm about to lay a hand on her. <laughs> Praise God. Look at that. Thank you, Jesus. That's, that's the not sleeping at night coming out. <laughs> you know, blessings, Lord. Thank you for health. Safety, just call it blessed in Jesus' holy name. Awesome. Wow. You know, I almost just had a weird moment and was, I want one. No, 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 I'm just kidding, just kidding. No, no. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll grow the church one way or another. Praise God. You guys get busy. Bring some more kids in. Let's go. Hallelujah. Uh, let's get ready to dismiss before I mess this up anymore. Hey, friendship team, could you come forward, please? Uh, we want to, again, thank all of our guests for being with us, both online and here. But if you're visiting with us today for the very first time, we want to give you a special welcome. And we have some uh, free stuff for you and just a, a packet. Now, maybe you've already uh, received that, but our friendship team is going to be hanging out in the fellowship hall. If you're new today for the very first time, you just go to them and say, this is my first, first day today. Thank you, guys. Love you. Appreciate it. And then in the seat pouch in the chair just in front of you is a clipboard with a card. Uh, most of you who are a part of the church family know about this. If you're visiting today, this is an opportunity for you to tell us what your prayer requests may be, praise reports in your life, uh, any comments that you might have about the service uh, this morning. We welcome those. We're always happy to see those things. And, and there's a place over here in the information center off to my left where you can deposit those care and communication cards. We have a group that gets together every Tuesday morning and prays over every request, and we also rejoice with you over every praise report. So we would appreciate that, uh, filling those out if you get a chance to. Would you stand with me? Let me send you out blessed. What a glorious day. In the, I mean, I've had such a good time today. been so wonderful having our special guest with us. Thank you. I hope that it can happen again soon. Amen. And uh, praise God. Uh, I call you blessed in Jesus' name. I pray that the peace and favor of God be all over you 
all week long. I also just going to speak another blessing. I'm going to pray and believe that no matter where you go, Jesus is going to be chasing you. Amen. And so don't be hard to get. Just let him get a hold of you. I call you blessed. May the peace of God go with you and be upon you all week long. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on Wednesday night.